911 dispatchers of Reddit. What are some of the dumbest calls you've gotten? Story 1. Kind of relevant. Worked in the Coast Guard where one of my jobs was the same thing as a dispatcher, with radios and phones and boats instead of cars to respond. One day, someone called me to tell me their young daughter was just kidnapped. I asked them if the kidnapper was on a boat or near the water. They said no. The caller just didn't think it was a big enough issue to call 911, so they called the Coast Guard instead. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2. I've been a dispatcher for about 7 years now in a medium-sized county in Florida. A. Every year on July 4th and New Year's, we get calls about gunshots. Every single time the caller is perfectly convinced they're gunshots and couldn't possibly be fireworks. They'll say they hear automatic weapons or, my personal favorite, rapid-fire shotguns. And every single time a deputy goes out to investigate, and it turns out to be the unlikely culprit of fireworks. B. I had one woman call 911 to tell me she found a cell phone on the ground. That's... that's it. C. Irate elderly male calls 911 while standing in the sheriff's office lobby to report the clerk not being helpful enough. When I told him that's not something you use 911 for, he went crazy, going as far as to threaten to break into the office and shoot me. He was subsequently arrested. D. Male was arrested for domestic battery, called 911 from the backseat of the patrol car and stated he was being unlawfully imprisoned. When I told him the only thing I could do for him was send more deputies, he said, no thanks, and hung up. He then proceeded to call three more times looking for a different answer. We told the deputies on scene. They took his phone away and added a charge of misuse of 911. E. Had a woman call in stating she accidentally took too much melatonin. She started getting hysterical when she felt the effects of her overdose. She was getting sleepy. Story 3. 1. Every Thanksgiving, you'll always get the person who calls because they don't know how long to cook a turkey. Never fails. I'm gonna have to wait for that. 2. Every Thanksgiving, someone always puts a frozen turkey in a deep fryer, usually in a trailer home, and a fire, surprisingly, occurs. And 3. People who have warrants on themselves love calling to complain and ask to see the police in person for a dispute. They don't seem to remember we look up everyone in the dispute, not just the accused. So for number one here, are people calling 911 to ask how long to cook a turkey for or because they cooked it too long and something happened? I like to imagine people are just really looking for cooking advice on 911. Story 4. We have a call that every new trainee in my county listens to during training, because it highlights how completely oblivious our callers can truly be. A neighbor enters her friend's house because she's not answering the door. She finds her on the couch, sleeping. She calls 911 because she's not waking up. She says, She's not moving, not answering me, or waking up. It looks like she's been cooking with blueberries, her hands are all blue. Operator already knows that means she's dead. We send everyone out. EMS arrives first on scene and immediately backs out. According to the deputy that arrived right after, she had a gun in her hand. She had shot herself in the head and it splattered all over the wall behind her. Our caller never even noticed. Story 5. I'm not a 911 dispatcher, but I'm a central station operator. I'm the lady that asks what your password is when your alarm goes off. Been at my job for five years. My favorite call ever was the second call I made to the house of an old couple. Their alarm had gone off about 30 minutes prior and they weren't sure why the alarm was sounding, so they asked me for the police to be dispatched. On the second call, the wife answered the phone, gave me all the correct information and then passed the phone to the officer. The alarm was still sounding, but there was another weird beep in the background. We walked the owners through shutting their system off, but this beep was still going off. The officer was getting frustrated and the homeowners weren't sure why the alarm was still sounding, so they asked me to shut the alarm down. I told him that our system was shut off and the beeping wasn't from us. The officer then went looking for the sound. He found out it was their alarm clock sounding. I swear, I heard him roll his eyes through the phone and I just tried my best not to laugh. He handed the phone back to the older couple who still had no idea what was going on, but said that the officer told them that everything was okay. Did the officer not tell them it was their alarm clock? Because if he didn't, then this is just going to happen again. Story 6. Some lady warned the fire department to come burn her house down because she thought a demon lived in it. I sent paramedics and police to check on her, but I told her we'd be happy to burn her house down in a controlled training capacity if she wanted to donate it. But there was a lot of paperwork to get that started. Story 7. So I am not a dispatcher, but I was a witness to this call while in high school. About two months after the Columbine shootings, I was hanging out after school by the Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps building at my high school. The building had a drill team, but the rifles are dummy, weighted, realistic-looking rifles that can't fire and could only be used as a club, really. 
The drill team was practicing after school, and after one guy missed the catch after throwing his rifle into the air, it came down and knocked him unconscious with a gash on his head. Looked nasty, but not life-threatening. The teacher, a former Navy officer, immediately started first aid and told a student to call 911. Cell phones weren't as prevalent then, and the kid went inside the building to use the phone. Now this is the dumb part. The student, panicking, told the 911 operator that his friend was hit by a rifle at a high school and was bleeding out. SWAT got there in about seven minutes, sees a bunch of kids holding what appear to be rifles. Yeah, it was a mess. One ambulance out of the ten sent got there eventually after SWAT gave the all clear. The kid hit by the rifle was okay, but needed around 10 stitches and ended up with a new nickname of Snipe. Story 8. Repo companies in the area report their repos to us, just in case the owner decides to try and report the car stolen. I started my shift that day logging several, when one of the owners calls in. We take his info, confirm it matches, and let him know it was reported as repossessed and to contact his finance company. A little while later, he calls 911 again to let us know that he paid it up to date and the address they gave him to pick up the car didn't exist so he wanted to report it stolen. We again refer him to his finance company. A few hours later, he called 911 again. He checked his onboard GPS signal and saw it listed his car in another city the next state over. So he had driven there and searched the city, but didn't find it, so it had to be stolen. We again explain it was repoed and to continue speaking with his financial institution. The day carries on and we eventually get to the end of our shift. As we are wrapping everything for our shift up, before night shift gets in, he calls 911 again. He found the tow yard his car was stored at, but it was closed for the night. He needed us to open it for him so he could claim his car. We explained that it was a private business and the car wasn't stolen. So we can't just bust in and take it. He will have to claim the car once they're open in the morning. He was so moved by our logic that he decided to try reporting it as stolen again. Story 9. I actually had the finance company over a barrel in a similar situation. You see, I had in fact paid on time, early, in fact. Further, I had always paid before the due date and paid additional money to pay it off sooner. Joe Blow's towing company gets the call that I'm a no-pay. I come out to go to work, but no car. Immediate reaction was someone stole my car, so I dial up 911. We're a very small town, so the cop who shows knows me. We fill everything out and he asks me what happened to my yard. Turns out when the tow truck snuck in, they gouged a deep-ass furrow in my freshly seeded and growing yard. This gets documented as well. I realize that the tire treads are dualies. The light goes on. I call the finance company. Immediately ask for the regional manager. After some next-level self-control, I manage to sound only marginally like I'm going to blow a gasket. They pull my account, see nothing amiss, until I ask why my car has been repossessed. I explained that if my car was still there by lunchtime, I'd be pressing charges on only the finance company. Tow dudes were just fulfilling their contract. They say they are going to be calling me back shortly. Ten minutes later, I received a phone call. This is Mr. Money Grubbin, who is the VP of said finance company. Uh, sir, we did bad. Someone issued a repossession order for your vehicle, but I can clearly see that was an error. Since this must be a terrible inconvenience for you, we'll have your car returned before noon today. But you stole my property. How about we just take care of the last $1,200 you owe? Okay, get it to me in writing with the car, and I'll be in to pick up my title. Served them right. Story 10. My husband used to dispatch before he was old enough to go to police academy. We lived in a small town, ranked third most dangerous in our state. Lots and lots of substance use. There was a woman who was honestly crazy. I don't know if she had mental problems before the drugs, or if the drugs fried her brain, but she was a regular caller. Some of her calls, she would call and say that she had been assaulted. After coaxing some info out of her, she said that she knew who did it. It was her stuffed bear. Another time, she called to report a break-in because she fell asleep with her blanket wrapped around her, but when she woke up, it was bundled at her feet. She called one summer night, routinely got over 115 degrees in the summer, and said that she had walked three miles from her apartment and needed a ride back because she was barefoot and her feet hurt. He asked her where her shoes were and she said that she was carrying them. She walked three miles and didn't think to put them on. Another call wasn't stupid but still stuck with me. It was a domestic violence call and when he asked what was going on, the woman yelled, He threw a piping hot chicken pot pie at me! Something about her attention to detail I just thought was funny in an unfunny situation. Story 11. A man called 911 on himself because he was driving drunk. So he pulled over and waited for the police to get there. They got there and offered him a ride home. He's still getting charged. But he insisted that they take him down to county. 
He really wanted to go to jail, so uh, he did. Another time I picked up the phone and the caller says something about spires in her lungs. It was really hard to understand her. She had a heavy lisp and just didn't talk right. I'm thinking maybe she recently had some sort of surgical operation on her lungs. And she needed medical assistance. Maybe some sort of stent or something? I didn't know. After clarifying with her, I found out that she was talking about the spiders in her lungs. She went on to say that a demented goat just ate her dog and spat it out as a demon in her front yard. And something about the CIA. And that's when I realized that she was insane. Generally speaking, most calls are actually pretty dumb. Especially when people cluster up the 911 lines with calls that aren't emergencies. Please learn your local police and fire department's non-emergency dispatch number. There's a good chance the dispatch center might not even be in your city, but it should be able to be found with a few Googles. 911, what's the address of your emergency? Well, this isn't an emergency, but then stop talking and call this number instead. That has to be one of the most frequent interactions between dispatchers and callers. Story 12. I'm not a 911 dispatcher, however, I have a funny story involving my work and a 911 call. I work as a game master for an escape room company. We have a particular room that involves a phone, in which you need to input the correct phone number into it to progress the room. It's not a real phone, but one of the players had said, Dial 911. Their Apple Watch then dialed 911. They apologized and said that they were hostages in an escape room. Luckily, the dispatcher understood they were playing a game and not real hostages. For those wondering, if you input 911 into the phone in that room, it will say something along the lines of, you are unable to make the call as dialed. Story 13. Answered a 911 call from a gentleman stating someone was chasing him. He had no idea where he was other than it was the beach. I used the phase 2 location from his cell phone to start officers while I tried to get more information. Because English was not his first language and he seemed extremely panicked. He's in a vehicle and another vehicle was chasing him. I heard sirens in the background and asked if he knew who was chasing him. He said, yes, that it was border patrol and he was scared and refused to pull over for them. I convinced him to pull over for one of my officers and that was the end of it. So who did this guy think they were going to send from calling 911? Because there would just be more sirens coming his way. Story 14. My favorite was one taken by a coworker. She had a guy who called to report hearing gunshots. He was the kind of pompous guy who insisted he could tell her the caliber of gun from the sound of the shots. The officers were checking the area and he called back. What he insisted was a certain caliber gunshot was actually a can of coke exploding in his freezer. My most recent was a lady today who kept calling because she wanted to complain about her husband having their children. They are going through a divorce but still legally married. In our state, that means they have equal custody rights. She just kept telling me that he wasn't a US citizen. And she didn't like it when I told her that didn't matter. She actually asked me to send somebody to deport him. I politely declined that. Story 15. Going to let you in on a secret here? Most 911 calls are pretty dumb and not emergencies. I work overnight, so most of the calls we get are pretty legit. But occasionally, I've had a guy call in because he was looking at weather radar and said that law enforcement, NOAA, and the CIA were covering up the fact that the storm he was looking at was going to destroy the city. There was no storm. There was no rain or wind. It was clear outside. It had been for weeks and remained that way for weeks afterward. Another woman called in because she said someone broke into her home and was now currently sitting on her couch looking at his phone. She said some noise woke her up when she saw the light from his phone when she opened the bedroom door. I asked the usual questions including if she had a dog and whether it was alerting to the noise. She said that the dog was asleep in the bed and that he usually barks at strange noises. Huge clue that nothing is happening. Most dogs will alert to strange noises at night. Officer goes on scene and doesn't see anything. Turns out the light she saw was one of those electronic picture frames that she she owned and knew about. Another break-in call. Woman calls at around 2.30 in the morning. Says she heard someone knocking on her door and heard some noises outside. I've got two or three officers headed her way. Through our conversation, I find out she's hiding in the closet. Then I ask when was the last time she heard or saw something strange. She gets very quiet and says that the last she heard was around 11 p.m. Turns out the whole time she had been working up the nerve to call 911, sitting in the closet for three and a half hours. These are some of the more memorable ones I've had recently. Story 16. I work overnights on the weekends and usually get the drunkies. Lady called due to being in a fight with her cat. The cat kicked her. Man called from outside the bar demanding I send a fire truck to help him look for his glasses that he dropped. 
The man had the same name as a famous musician, so when I dispatched it as blank is intoxicated in the middle of the road, requesting that personnel assist him with locating his eyeglasses, my officer thought I was screwing with him. And not a call, but two super hillbilly guys come in with a Walmart sack. One of them holds it up and shakes it at me, and flatly says, I found a dead cat. He opened it to confirm that there was, in fact, a cat not moving with all four paws in the air. I'm stunned at first. I couldn't tell if they were serious. He wanted me to take it. I had to tell them that it's midnight. I'm a dispatcher and not a vet. And there's really nothing I can do about a dead cat you found on the road. He shakes the bag again and there was a loud meow. Cat tears out of the sack and just unleashes on the guy. He's screaming, Junior, Junior, help me! And crying. And this cat is just clawing everywhere he can reach. They get the cat calmed down and ended up leaving with it. I look around at the blood on the floor. Not sure if it was his or the cat's. But I was just like, what the frick? just happened. Story 17. EMT and dispatcher for a private company, with several 911 contracts since 2011. Everything under the sun, from common cold to not being able to sleep. People driving calling in to let us know that somebody they saw walking looks sick. They usually refuse to give us a call back or an address, so pretty literally just calling us to let us know. One of our homeless regulars jumped out of a dumpster to mug somebody and stubbed his toe landing. Constipation? The panicked rollover that was really just a kid who fell off his big wheel, and yes, we got fire, rescue, police, and ALS sent to him. There was no language barrier, and numerous calls for people fainting in church after finding Jesus, typically on Sundays. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of others. These were just the first to come to mind. I also want to take a second to elaborate a bit. I spend most of my time servicing an extremely poor community gripped by addiction, violence, and racism. And while everything I've listed is a ridiculous reason to call 911 for medical aid, and probably a bit humorous, I think it's important to remember how little these people have. I feel like the majority of the city is unemployed. Most of them don't have a high school education. They live in a world where violence is on every corner. There are a lot of things they can't handle by themselves, or how you and I would probably handle it, because they haven't had the opportunities you or I have had. A lot of them are also immigrants, who live and work with only other immigrants and speak almost no English. The concept of 911 here doesn't translate well to them. You or I think there's a dire emergency to call. To them, it's a culture of if you have a problem, any problem, call. And it's hard to re-educate. We can't exactly get a bunch of the first responders at a public meeting and announce, stop calling us for this crap. So we essentially have to find teachable moments on nonsense calls and try one person at a time. Which is a losing fight in a city of 100,000. Anywho, just something to think about before you read one from this thread and think, oh, what a freaking idiot. Story 18. A father requested an ambulance to take his son from one hospital's ED to go to another hospital's ED. Dad was upset because the nurses were trying to take a rectal temp from the boy and according to dad, this was going to turn him gay. The boy was less than two years old and very sick. Dad was perfectly willing to delay his care several hours out of some of the most profound ignorance I have ever encountered. We did not send him an ambulance because that would have been illegal, but also just because dad is a piece of crap. We did get the police and child protective services over there though. Story 19. Relaying these two stories from my mother who worked 911 for 20 years. I've posted them before, but here goes. 1. People are racist jerks. A woman called in panicking and upset, wanting an officer to come out to some shopping center where a dentist office was. My mom asks her what's going on, why does she need help? And this woman suddenly starts to whisper, I saw a black man walk up to the door of Dr. Such and Such and pull on the door. Well, maybe there's more to it, so mom asks follow-up questions. Can you still see the man? If so, what is he doing? And this woman gets standoffish and says, He tried the door, then walked down the sidewalk. I think he might come back. My mother tries again asking for more info, like maybe this idiot woman saw something incriminating to necessitate a police response. Nope. Instead, she gets pissed at my mother and restates, I told you he was black. Mom enjoyed harshly reminding her that having a dark skin color is not freaking illegal. What my mom believes happened was a man came up to the dentist's office, didn't notice the hours, tried the door, and when it didn't work, went back home or wherever like a normal person. Two, people are stupid. The second one is actually funny. So Friday night comes and my mom gets a call. The man on the other end is obviously ridiculously drunk and asks if she knows the number for Pizza Hut. 
they're not super busy, so she says she'll give it to him on this one occasion, but to never call 911 for this again. They think all is good and make fun of him for the rest of the night, until next week. Friday rolls around, and Drunk McDUI has looked up the non-911 number and asks again for the number to Pizza Hut, because he lost it while he was drunk on Saturday. Her partner at work gives it to him and warns him not to call again asking for Pizza Hut because they're not the damn operators. The next week, Friday rolls around and he calls again. And only this time does a friendly officer go down to his address to remind him to not call them to call Pizza Hut. No word on if he was given the number again by the officer. And one extra, this is the dumbest but real problem she was ever called in for. It was a semi-truck tire rolling down Main Street and endangering traffic. They weren't the brightest and apparently the responding officer blue-lighted the tire. They heard the sirens through the radio and asked him if he planned on pulling the tire over. After chasing it to a roundabout, it finally fell over. But the idea of them chasing a truck tire in a police car has made me laugh for 15 years. 